Shortly before giving birth, the sow has a strong instinct inherited from her wild boar ancestors to build a nest. In any kind of production system, the young piglets are very vulnerable for the first few days after birth. They're at risk of being accidentally crushed by their much larger mothers. In order to reduce piglet crushing, the farrowing crate was introduced. The farrowing crate was designed as a mechanical solution to the problem of sows falling on their piglets and crushing them in the first two days of life. After that, the piglet ought to be able to get out of the way. However, though it can protect young piglets from crushing, the farrowing crate causes welfare problems for the sow. Confined in crates without nesting material, sows show repetitive stereotypic behavior based on their motivation to nest build. As a result of frustration, stress hormones build up and birth can be delayed. This can put piglets at more risk of being stillborn. The farrowing crate also makes it harder for the sow to bond naturally with her newborn piglets. And this can increase the risk of the sow savaging them later. New systems have been developed, such as this one, which allow the sow more space to interact naturally with her young. The piglets still have a heated area to encourage them away from the dangers of crushing. Inherited maternal behaviors can also improve survival rates. For example, this sow naturally checks through the bedding before lying down. The key to piglet mortality really is the mothering ability of the sow. Uh, and when we first started keeping pigs here, we did have problems with that. Over the last 20 years, we've bred for mothering ability, only breeding from sows that are good at raising their young. If you select the right sort of sows with greater maternal ability and you give them the right environment in a deep straw nest, piglet losses to weaning will be no worse than they are with a farrowing crate. These piglets are about eight weeks old. By now they're eating a significant amount of solid food. But if left with their mother, they will naturally continue to drink some milk until they are 13 or as much as 17 weeks old. In most intensive systems, a key objective is to produce a maximum number of piglets per year, so they are weaned at three to four weeks. In the USA, as early as two weeks. The problem of weaning piglets as early as possible, at three weeks or less, are twofold. One they're not mature enough to go out into the world. They have to be in heated buildings, and that probably means put, putting them in cages. But in a commercial sense, the even bigger problem is the fact that their digestive systems are not adapted to anything but mother's milk at that stage. And the consequence of that is that a totally unacceptable proportion of piglets suffer from post-weaning enteritis, diarrhea, scours, respiratory diseases and things of this nature, which has over the years been covered by the blanket use of antibiotics. Health issues associated with weaning are compounded by the mixing of piglets from different litters. Mixing leads to fighting for dominance, adding to the stress of early weaning and making the piglets more susceptible to disease. Weaning age is pretty critical for pigs. The later a pig is weaned, uh, the more robust they are, their digestive system has matured more, and they're actually much more socially integrated and able to cope with any trauma around weaning. For this reason, European Union legislation requires that most piglets may not be weaned until they're at least four weeks old. Later still would be better for the piglets, but this can cause health and welfare problems for the sow. With a large litter, she can't sustain milk production without losing condition. This can also affect the health of the next litter. Organic rules require that weaning is delayed till about six to eight weeks. The health of the sow can still be maintained by choosing more appropriate breeds, capable of sustaining a lactation. 
This is possible if they produce smaller litters and, in the case of these saddlebacks, if they have larger reserves of fat to draw on when lactating. Later weaning ensures that piglets can grow healthily without antibiotics. We like to wean at eight weeks, not earlier than that. At that point, the pigs are really strong. There's no check in their growth rate at all. We don't get scours, we don't get any of the problems that often require medication in earlier weaning systems. Tail biting usually just starts with piglets playing with each other's tails, sucking them and then nibbling them. Um, that can proceed to chewing them and they can literally chew up the tail and actually cause really severe wounds at the root of the tail and, uh, and this can lead to infection and in certain cases death. Commercial pigs are fed a concentrated diet to maximise growth. This doesn't take much time to eat. In barren environments pigs get bored and often start chewing each other, particularly on ears and tails. This can soon escalate into a full outbreak of tail biting. Other factors may contribute to the problem, such as overcrowding, drafts, or other forms of discomfort. In a barren environment, you classically see them squabbling with one another. They, they are frustrated and they, they, their arousal is an arousal associated with anxiety rather than fun. The conventional response to this problem is to dock piglets' tails shortly after birth. This is a very painful operation, and it addresses the symptoms of the problem, not the causes. In response to this, the EU requires farmers to try alternatives, such as reducing crowding and enriching environments before resorting to tail docking. One solution which has been tried is to provide objects such as footballs and chains Pigs will initially attempt to chew them, but once they find that chains are not edible, they will lose interest. Hanging ropes can be more effective since they are made of a fibrous material which pigs may consume. A better solution is to provide materials such as straw, and some farmers then see no need for tail docking. No, we don't practice the blasting of the so, uh, <laughs> In different parts of the world, locally available materials such as peanut husks, rice hulls or ground wood can be used. This encourages foraging behaviour and substantially reduces the incidence of tail biting. In Brazil, they are uh, using this system mainly for piglets, just after weaning. I saw a huge difference. The, animal, the animals, the piglets on bedding, were very active, playing, uh, and trying to find things in the middle of the straw. Maybe they found and they eat something. And it's, it is very easy to see that the, the bedding system is, is better for the, these animals. Tail docking is less often practiced in extensive systems. Outdoor pigs are less likely to tail bite, where they have plenty of opportunity for foraging. 